transition from a beautiful Shabbat into a new moon, new month. Hallelujah. Uh, this evening's class is called Inherited Debt. Inherited Debt. What happens if your parent dies with debt? Unfortunately, debt does not die when the person who owes them does. Debts are settled during a process that is called probate. Creditors have a certain period of time during the probate process to file claims for what is owed. Then, the estate of the person who died is responsible for paying those debts. Let's begin in Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Because we might think of debt as just finances and money owed. Let's look at some stuff that the scripture has going on. Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the lawlessness of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now he says, Rai Yahweh Elohim, I'm a jealous Elohim, visiting the lawlessness of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. How is he visiting the lawlessness of the fathers upon the children? Those same lawless deeds are passed down from generation to generation. We didn't just grow up putting up Christmas trees. We saw that. That was an act that was passed down from generation to generation. So that's the lawlessness of the fathers being visited upon the children. Fourth generation. That's how long it's going on. So how many other things have been passed on? that are being visited upon the children, deeds passed down from parent to children. Let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 27 through 35. A lot of what we do, we didn't just pick it up on our own. These are things passed down from generation to generation. And some of us, may not see those things as lawlessness. But what is Yahweh looking at? Makes us have to re-examine some of the things that was taught to us by our parents. Numbers chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 27. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Yephani, and Yosef, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as you are, but as for you, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. So while they're being punished, the parents are being punished, the children still have to suffer through that debt that they owe. The children had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years while they being killed off. So you taking part a part of their debt. You included a part of that punishment. But what other debts have we inherited throughout our lifetime that we don't know about? Go ahead. 
After the number of days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall you bear your lawlessness, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Forty years. A year for each day. Let's consider at what age our father or our mother, if they have passed away, died. Let's consider what debt have they racked up and left behind. Go ahead. I, Yahweh, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there shall they shall die. There they shall die. Isn't that it? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse 1. And it's funny how classes coincide because uh, we went over some of this earlier today. But we sit back and we let Yahweh do his perfect work. Go ahead. Is it really today? You know, same. Uh, yesterday. Thank you, All sir. Right. I appreciate it. I thought you weren't going to have any comments. Where are we at? First. Verse 1 of chapter Verse 21. One. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Nabal, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, Adonai, no, Yahweh, forget, forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. It's Be funny that what he's trying to take away is this man's inheritance. This man said, I will not give my inheritance of my fathers to you. And we're dealing with inherited debt. But let's see what happens with inheritance at the end of this. Go ahead. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because the word in which the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him for he had said I will not give thee the inheritance of my father and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread but Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread and he said unto her because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and the nobles that were in, this, in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and say Naboth, set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, and bear witness against him, saying, Thus didst, thus didst blaspheme Elohim and the king, and then carry him out, and stone him, that he may die. And the men, of the, the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were in, in the, the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed the fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and set before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme Elohim and the king. 
Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not, is not alive, but dead. And in it, and, it, and it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of Yahweh came to Eliah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, In the place where dogs lick, lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Eliah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of Yahweh. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahiah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake Yahweh, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel, by the wall of Jezreel, him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of Yahweh, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably, abominably in following idols according to all things, and did the as, as the Amorites whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard these words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh, fasted and laid in sackcloth and went softly. And when Yahweh, and when the word of Yahweh came to Eliah the Tishbite saying, seest that how Ahab humbleth himself before me, because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. So when you look at this, it was both Ahab and Jezebel that committed sin. Right? Ahab humbled himself. His sin, Yahweh said, I won't do it in his days. I'm going to do it in his son's days. So who picked up that debt? Who inherited that debt? Both the mother and the father did this. She got her just but the father's own bypassed him. There's a lot of things that we have to consider. That debt is now put on the son. Debt is anything owed by one person to another. Debt can involve real property, money, services, or other consideration. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 21. Second Samuel chapter 21, and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. Then there was a famine in the days of Dawid, three years, years, year after year. And Dawid inquired of Yahweh, and Yahweh answered, and it was for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but were remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judea. Wherefore Dawid said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? 
And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of, the, of Yahweh? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say that will I do for you? And they answered the king, The man that consumed us and that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts, coasts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto Yahweh and Gibeah. And Saul, whom oh, Saul, Yahweh, Gibeah Saul, of Saul, Gibeah of Saul, whom Yahweh did choose, and the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, the son of Yonathan and the son of Saul, because Yahweh oath, Yahweh's oath that was between them, between Dawid and Yonathan the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Riz, Rizpha, the son of Ahath, whom she bare unto Saul, Amiram, Amona, Amona, and Meshabuta, Meshabusha the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up from Adiel, or Adriel, Ad Adriel the son of Bariz Barzillai, the Maholathite. The Maholathite. And he delivered them into the hand of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before Yahweh, and they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. So if we go back to verse 1, then there was famine in the days of Dawid three years, year after year, and Dawid inquired of Yahweh. And Yahweh answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. So the first people who were picking up this debt was the whole nation of Israel. When Dawid inquired, Yahweh told him why this was happening. That was Saul's debt. So okay, take care of this business. This is Saul's problem. Let's take it right back to Saul's family. And in the end, the Gibeonites say, guess what? To settle this debt, this inherited debt, give us seven of his sons. Seven of his sons was put to death for something that he caused. There's so much inherited debt that we miss. Inherited debt passed down, but our whole nation was paying for that first. So imagine if we didn't inquire. It's the Yahweh of why are we going through this? There's points and times when elder have to make a decision. And somebody got to leave. Why? Because you look around the congregation and you say, why are we going through this? Oh, okay, I see the, I see the root cause over here. And sometimes that person is removed and it might take you some time and period and say, you know what, man, I haven't enjoyed Shabbats like I've done lately. And then you, you, you start reflecting on something and say, man, you know, it's because this individual is gone. The funny thing is, I'm looking at New Moon and I, I didn't realize that there was a point in time that the New Moon meals that the brothers put together while serving the meals there was vexation for me in the kitchen because of how somebody else in the kitchen was dealing. There was all for themselves. But it might take some time before you realize how much, you know, man, I, I really enjoy these new moon meals now being in the kitchen. And guess what? That didn't dawn on me till tonight or this evening when I was making the new moon meal. I realized that it was really a vexation to me. Because while we're trying to have a new moon feast, other people worrying about how they can get part of the feast for their tomorrow's meal. So what does that mean? If they worrying about having some of the feast meal for their tomorrow's meal, that means they skimping on what is being dished out to the rest of us. And I couldn't understand why it just irked me. 
until tonight while I'm fixing the meal and I realized it was really a botheration to me. But sometimes, yeah, we feel some kind of way when the person's gone, but then as time go on, you realize that, you know what, damn it, I'm glad they gone. Because I got peace. But I want us to all know it's, that peace don't last forever. Why? Because Yahweh has to prepare us for the next thing coming. So enjoy the peace while you got the peace. But also keep in your mind that, hey, that next trial and tribulation is coming. <clears throat> in the definition above, it said that debt can be other consideration. Well, consider this. Can debt be something placed in your members as what we would call traits passed down from our parents, something we may have to fight to overcome. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 12. Second Samuel chapter 12, and we're going to begin at verse 10. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of, of this son. For thus didst it secretly, but I will do this. Um, I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And Dawid said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahweh. And Nathan said unto Dawid, Yahweh also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. All right. He said he shall not die, but he also told him the sword shall not leave your house. Let's jump back to chapter eleven and see what Yahweh was talking about. 2 Samuel chapter 11, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that Dawid sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rahab, but Dawid tarry still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that Dawid arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And Dawid sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Beth Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And Dawid sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lied with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. So, Yahweh said you kill a man and took his wife. The sword shall never leave your house. Let's take a look and see if we can get a little deeper into that. Because Yahweh also says, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 11, Yahweh says, I will take your wives before your eyes. 2 Samuel chapter 16, we're going to read verses 15 through 23. He said, I'm going to give it to a neighbor of yours. 2 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 15. And Absalom. And all the people of the men of Israel came to Jerusalem and Ahapathel with him. And it came to pass when Hushai, Hushai the, archite. the archite, Dawid's friend, was come unto Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, Elohim save the king, Elohim save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why, want, why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom Yahweh and, the, and this people and all the men of Israel choose his will, I be, 
and with him will I abide. And again, whom shall I serve? Shall I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahapathel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahapathel said unto Absalom, Go in unto, go in unto thy father's concubine, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are in thee, with thee, be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel, and the counsel of Ahapathel, which he concealed which in, he counseled. counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of Elohim, so, so was all the counsel of Ahapathel, both with Dawid and with Absalom. So Yahweh told him the sword would never leave your house. But the debt that was paid was in his son. That was that lust passed on. Remember, he killed a man to get his wife. His own son, what Yahweh say? I'm going to give it to a neighbor of yours. How more neighborly can that get? Your own son. So the debt was that lust in his flesh that he had for another man's wife. Yeah, we put that same war member in his son. Lust for his wives. We got war members that we don't know where they come from. Do we look at the traits of our parents and can we see them in us? And then can we look at those traits in our children and say, you know, I need to curve this before it go too far. Said the sword would never leave his house. My brother, can you give me the definition for debt, please? Debt, H2258, Cahobel, from H2254, a pawn, a security for debt, pledge. Can I have the next definition there? That was the Hebrew definition. This is the Greek definition. G5055, Tello from G5056 to N, that is complete, execute, conclude, discharge, a debt, accomplish, make an end, expire, fill up, finish, go over, pay, perform. So a part of that debt definition is to execute. Absalom ex executed a job, performed a job, which still falls under debt. King David had at least 18 wives that we can account for in the scriptures. His son Absalom slept with 10 of them. His son Slomo had a thousand wives. Could there be more to the sword will never depart from your house than the backstabbing and treachery that went on amongst his sons? Could the inheritance of debt require that certain deeds must be performed? Let's go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 14. Second Kings chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoza, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judea. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem, and he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, yet not like Dawid his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense in the high places. And it came to pass, as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hands, that he slew his servants, which had which had slain the king his father, but the children of the murderers he slew not, according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moshe, wherein Yahweh commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, 
but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 16 says, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5 states that Elohim visits the lawlessness of the father upon the children. Now there's a big difference between being visited for the crime versus having to die for the crime of our fathers. Brown Drivers Briggs definition for visit is H6485, which the, wor which the word is paquad, which means to attend to, muster, number, reckon, visit, punish, appoint, look after, care for. Oftentimes during our prayer, we ask for forgiveness for the sins of our forefathers. But have we ever taken into account that as we are working to pay off our own debt, that we may have incurred some inherited debt? Definition 1A from the same definition in Brown Drivers Briggs for visit says to appoint, assign, lay upon as a charge, deposit. So at any point in time that any of us think ourselves to be some great one, just remember that none of us know what is truly on our account, so we have to keep working in order to gain our salvation. That's all we're going to do for this evening. Shalom, family. Shalom. Shalom.